Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi fellow mathematicians, welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. Today we're going to be working on perimeter and area. This is something that you get into when you're in fourth or fifth grade and we're going to go into it. We're going to talk about the formula, which is really exciting because this is when you start learning about formulas. And we're going to get to some practice problems as well. Let's take a look. Before we get started, I think you need to have a good understanding of the vocabulary that I'll be using. So let's take a look here. We have area, the number of square units needed to cover a flat surface. Notice I said square units. So that, that unit could be just a unit or it could be a measurement system such as the metric system, so it could be a meter, or the U.S. system, it could be a foot or a mile. Base, it's a polygon side or a two-dimensional shape, usually a polygon or circle by which a three-dimensional shape is measured or named. Formula, a set of symbols that express a mathematical rule. For example, area is equal to base times height, or a equals B times H or BH. Height, a measure of a perpendicular from the base to the top of a two-dimensional shape. Perimeter, the distance around a shape and then the square unit. A unit of area with dimensions of one unit by one unit. It could be one foot by one foot. It could be one meter by one meter. It could be one millimeter by one millimeter or it could be an inch by inch. So our essential question today is how can you use a formula to find the perimeter of a rectangle? Well, let's break this down first. So the perimeter is the measurement around a shape. So we have 15, so I'm looking for the perimeter. So I'm gonna say P is equal to, here we go. I'm gonna leave out the units, but it's 15 centimeters here, plus 35 centimeters, plus 15 centimeters, plus 35 centimeters. Okay, and I'm looking at that, I'm like, well, wait a minute, that could mean that perimeter is equal to, and if this is the width, or the height, and this is the width, so let's say, um, so two times the height, so because it's 15 and 15, plus two times the width, which is the width, let's try it out, so well, first, let's look at this. There's 15 and 15. That's 30, 60, 90, and that's 100 because we add 10 more. So that's equal to 100 centimeters. I want to keep, keep that going right. So let's take a look here. So I have perimeter is equal to 2 times the height, which is 15, plus 2 times the width which is 35, okay, you get, see where I'm going with this? So that is equal to, so two times 15 is 30, plus two times 35, which is 70. And again, we get the same answer of 100 centimeters. Let's put it to practice. Eric is putting a stone border around his rectangular garden. The length of the garden is seven feet, right here. The width of the garden is five feet. How many feet of stone border does Eric need? So remember that formula, P is equal to 2H plus 2W. Okay, let's take a look at this. Let's plug in some numbers. So two, and I have the length, or that could be the height, so let's just say that's seven feet, two times seven, plus the width, which is five, so I have two, two times five. Keep on going, two times seven is 14, plus two times five is 10, and that is equal to 24, and what units are we using? Well, we're using feet, so it's gonna be 24 linear feet, and that's how much border that we need to have for the garden here. Could we have added it up? 5 plus 5 is 10, 7 plus 7 is 14, 10 plus 14 is 24. Easy peasy. Now I want you to practice this and remember what I was talking about with a square 
versus a rectangle that's a little bit different, but it's going to get you the same results as if you did with times height. Pause the video, and I want you to work this out and then come back and see if you've gotten the correct answer. Welcome back. So let's take a look here. It says identify the formula to find the perimeter of a square. We have these two sides here for the square. It's showing me that this side is 8 meters, this side is 8 meters, so this side is 8 meters, and this side is 8 meters. And I said in a previous slide, I said perimeter is equal to 4s, where s is the length or the width of the sides there. So we say p is equal to 4 times 8 meters, and 4 times 8 is equal to 32 meters. I can add it up. 8 and 8 is 16, plus 8 is 24, plus 8 more is 32. Number 3. Identify the formula to find the perimeter of a rectangle. Then calculate the perimeter of a given rectangle. Well, we know that the perimeter is going to be equal to 2h plus 2 width. Now sometimes it's uh, we can call this the length, and this is the width, or the width here, and the length. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it all adds up to the same. So I'm just saying this is my h, that's my height, and this is my width. Okay? So let's plug in the numbers. So perimeter is equal to 2 times 24 plus 2 times 30. Now what does that equal? So that equals 2 times 24 is 48 plus 2 times 30 is 60 and that equals, what does that equal? So 40 plus 60 is 100 plus 8 ones is 108. 108 and since that's centimeters it's going to be 108 centimeters. Remember, we must use the units there. If there's no units there, it's just 108 units. We have more practice. Giselle is making a tablecloth shaped like a square. Each side measures 36 inches. She wants to add ribbon along the edges. Since she has 108 inches of ribbon, does she have enough ribbon? Well, one thing we need to do, it says Giselle is making a tablecloth shaped like a square. So we know that the sides are equal. We have equal sides. Each, well, and then it says it. Each side measures 36 inches. I'm going to circle that. She wants to add ribbon along the edges. She, this is what she has. She has, that's given, 108 inches of ribbon. Does she have enough ribbon? That's what we want to find. Does she have enough ribbon? Okay, so we're looking at, this is going to be perimeter is equal to force S, which is the four times the side length. So that's going to be equal to four times 36. Okay. And I know that two times 36 is 72. So 4 times 36 is going to be 72 plus 72, okay, is 144, 144 inches. Okay, notice I have that. So does she have enough ribbon? Well, she has 108 inches, so I would have to say is that Giselle does not, not have enough ribbon. And that's the answer. See how easy that was to figure it out? Here's what it takes and that's what that's what she has. So she definitely does not have enough ribbon. Let's take a look at number five. The width of the Junior Seo Beach Community Center is 20 meters. The length is twice as long as its width. What is the perimeter of the center? So first, this is a two-step. So we know that the width is 20 meters. Right here it shows us this is our, that's W. And the length is twice as long as its width. So 
the length is equal to 2 times the width, okay, which is equal to 2 times 20. Okay, so 2 times 20 is equal to 40 meters. So there we go. So 40 meters. And I know the perimeter is equal to, so this is going to be 2w plus 2l. Let's call that the length right here. So we're going to say 2 times 20 plus 2 times 40. And what does that equal? So now we have 2 times 20 is 40. 2 times 40 is 80, so plus 80. And that is equal to, so 0 1s plus 0 1s is 0. So 8 tens plus 4 tens is equal to 12 tens. So that's going to give me 120 meters is the perimeter of the Junior Seu Beach Community Center. Now that we've gone through the practice for perimeter, we can take a look at area. So the equi essential question is, how can you use a formula to find the area of a rectangle? So we were talking about area being uh, the product of the width times the height, So, or the base times the height. We can say this is the base and, base and this is the height. It doesn't really matter when it comes to a rectangle or square. So we're going to say area. So A is equal to the base times, that little dot there means times the height. So BH or just BH. So let's come down here. Let's take a look at this. So 8 meters times 3 meters. We can do this. We say the area is equal to the base. Let's say that's 8 meters times, there's a little dot there instead of the x, times 3. So 8 times 3 is equal to 24 because 8 plus 8 is 16 plus 8 more is 24. Now here's where we, we're, so the thing is, is that I have a meter, 8 meters times 3 meters, that is equal to B square meters. So we have, that's that, si that's that symbol right here, that 2, it's, like it's showing me that this is uh, an area because it's meters times meters. If it was feet times feet, it would be feet squared. All right, let's take a look at these shapes too. So it doesn't matter the, the configuration of um, or this, this, the shape or whatever, but if we're looking at the, the, these nine units, so if this is, let's say this is one unit by one unit, so one times one is one, so this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we would say that that is equal to nine square units. If it was, if they were each meters, that would be square meters instead. But wait, let's look at this. We have this rectangle. If we look at this square, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those one unit squares, or square units, I should say. Uh, that means that it is also nine square units. Same thing goes for this shape here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If it's one by one for each of these squares, it's still going to be nine square units. But there are special formulas for certain shapes. We're going to get into that later, but right now we're working with rectangles and squares. So a formula for the rectangle is area is width times the height, or also, that's also equal to base times the height. So I'm going to get that B here, base times the height. Okay, so if I have 3 times 8, again, that's going to be, so this is my area is equal to BH or WH and that is equal to 8 times 3 which is equal to 24 and that's going to be square ask you units so we have the square units here 
but there's a slight difference. I've hear I've heard people say units square, and there's a, a difference that can have a dramatic impact on the size or the uh, area. So here we have a three square centimeter. So it's one square centimeter, two square centimeters, three square meters. But if I have three centimeters square, which is one, two, three, one, two, three. So three centimeters times three centimeters is nine centimeters square. That is three times the size. You can see it, one, one, two, three. Three times the size. So that could have a dramatic impact on your calculations or the amount of material you're ordering for, let's say, uh, creating a skirt. What do you want to know? Now, one thing I want to point out over here, and I'll have this inside the notes for this video, is I have this website. And it's pretty neat to say, you know, www.mathisfun.com geometry slash area. So check that out. That might have some more practice for you so that you can get done and have a deeper understanding of what we're talking about with area. Here's some practice. Number six, Jorge is painting a wall that measures eight feet by 12 feet. How much does he need to cover? So paint usually comes by saying, hey, it'll cover so many square feet. Let's just go ahead and just draw this out. So let's say that's approximately eight feet here. Eight feet by 12 feet. I have my units here, which is eight feet by 12 feet. And I know that the area is going to be equal to, let's say the, the width times the height, width times height instead of base times height this time. So the width is 12. So I'm going to say is equal to 12 times eight. Okay, and what is that equal to? Well, we can take a look. We can do the calculations really quickly. 10 times 8 is 80, plus 2 times 8 is 16. So that's going to give me equal to 96. And I'm going to do SF. And that stands for square feet. Okay, so I can say Jorge needs paint to cover 96 square feet, period. Let's take a look at number seven. Mila is laying down sod in her new yard to grow a new lawn. Each piece of sod is one foot by one foot square. How many pieces of sod will Camila need to cover her yard if the yard measures 30 feet by 14 feet? So let's again, let's draw our picture. Let's say this is 14 and oops, feet, and this is 30 feet. One thing we know is that each piece of sod is one foot by one foot. So we can just say this, I'm just gonna say approximately, this is one foot, one by one. We're looking at the number of pieces, right? So it's not, looking at the area, we're looking at the number of pieces to cover that. But this is gonna help us figure that out. So again, that area, and I'm gonna come over here, so area is equal to, and again, it's that width times the height, so we have the width, so let's say that's 30 times 14. And again, I'm just gonna put an F here, FT here, just a little small one, just as a remember that these are by feet. So how do we figure this out? Well, 30 times 10 is 300 right? And then we look at 4 times 30 is going to be 120, so it's going to be 420 square feet. And if we have 1 foot by 1 foot, so that's 1 square foot, so Mila, I'm just going to do C, needs 420 pieces of sod. Of sod. Easy peasy. So if you're using like GoMath or iReadyMath or some other system that your school has to teach you math, this is you're going to see something similar to this in the in the practice problems or in a test or whatever. Let's look at number eight. And this is going to be something similar if you use whether it's GoMath or iReadyMath or some other system that your school is using. It's going to be very similar to like either the practice problems or something that might come up on a test. So what are we looking for? What is the perimeter of the shape below if one square is equal to one square foot? What that is telling me that this is equal to one foot, right? 
and this side right here is equal to one foot. So therefore, since all of them are equal, I know I can just count the perimeter, you know, or I can count the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine. And it's one, two, three. But wait a minute, what I can do is I can take this out here, here, because remember we're just look we're looking for the perimeter. So instead of counting this side, I can just put it down here. And same thing here, I'm moving it over here. So I can look at this as if it's a three by nine rectangle. And the perimeter is equal to, so two times the side, so three feet, so two times three plus two times nine. And that is equal to six plus 18. And that gives us 24. And remember, we're just, it's the perimeter, so it's gonna be 24 feet. It's linear feet. Here's my answer. Double check, start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Got the same answer, so I know that just validated all the work I did right here. Number nine, let's take a look. Cyrus makes the diagram below to represent the kitchen counter space he wants to build in his new house. What is the total area of the counter space? So we're looking for area, but we're missing some measurements. We know that this is 13 feet, right? Okay, but what's the height? So they could say this width, what's the height here? We know the, the width and the height. This is a square, it's a five foot square, and this is eight foot. So f eight minus five, so this is gonna be three feet high, right? So three feet, so I know that's three feet, Again, I don't know what, I know what this length is, but I don't know what this length is. So this right here is going to be equal to, so 15 minus three, so that's gonna be 12 feet. How many rectangles do we need to find the area for? Well, we have one, two, three rectangles. Let's start off with this one here. So this is gonna be 25, because five times five, which is the, the length times the width, or 25 square feet, 13 times three, so let's see here. I'm gonna say this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. So number one equals 25 square feet. Number two is equal to 13 times three. And that is equal to, so three times 10, which is 110 here, is gonna give me 30. And then three times three is 39, or we can just say 13 plus 13 is 26 plus 13 more is 39 square feet. And then number three is equal to, so it's three times 12, 12 times three, and that is equal to 36 because 12 plus 12 is 24 plus 12 more is 36. So I just add all of this up, 25 and then 39, 36. I'm gonna add all of that up. Five plus nine is 14 plus six more is 20. That gives me zero ones and two tens. Two tens plus two tens is four tens, plus three tens is seven tens, plus three more tens is 10 tens, which is gonna give me 100 square feet. So that's the total amount of counter space Cyrus is gonna have in his new kitchen. Thank you very much for watching Mr. Woods Teaches and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.